the ocean, makes up 80% of the earth and is home to over a million different types of species, teeming with life since the beginning of time. Humans have always utilized the ocean for enjoyment to bring us closer together, for exploration and recreation. 2.75 billion of the world's population lives on the coast, but humans have always contributed to the destruction of the ocean, contamination, pollution, overfishing, and more. We have caused a new problem. The invasion of the lionfish is the worst human-related disaster in the Atlantic that we have caused and will have to face in the future. Okay, my name is Chris Fluck. Um, I was the collector of specimens at the Bermuda Aquarium for about 15 years. Um, and in that process, I started seeing the problem of the lionfish starting. Um, so I sort of led the charge here to create a program to potentially tackle the, the problem. All right. And um, when did the lionfish start to come to the Caribbean? Um, it's, it's a hard one to actually pinpoint because some of the earliest reports go back is, is sort of like the late 70s, early 80s where some of the first sightings were. Um, in Bermuda, it was about 2000, 2001, we started seeing them showing up here. Um, there was definitely an event of Biscayne Bay where five or so lionfish were released accidentally during Hurricane Andrew. Um, the aquarium just got demolished by the storm. Those fish got into the environment, and then once that group was together, you had the critical mass to start the population breeding. I think before that, more than likely, you had the occasional fish here and there, but the dynamics of the population weren't enough to start actually producing. So about in 92, um, you can see a huge influx of lionfish starting up and down the East Coast. They showed up here shortly after that. In about 2004 was the first one they sighted in Bahamas, and now, only a few years on, it's one of the most dominant fish on the reef in Bahamas. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really tragic. I mean, it's, it's the population dynamics of once you get that critical mass of breeding adults, the population will expand exponentially. The lionfish is that um, it's, their nature is the fact that um, where they're natively found, the, it, it seems like the, the population of fish that they're preying on keeps them in balance. So in their native range, they've got to work really hard to get food. So they eat as much as they can whenever they can because they might not eat tomorrow. Um, so once those fish were accidentally introduced to the Atlantic, now what it is, that same mentality is eating as much as they can whenever they can. Um, that's, our fish just don't see them as a threat here. So what happens is they're gorging and they're overeating because they're programmed through nature to eat as much as they can because they might not eat tomorrow. The fish in the Atlantic seem to be very naive to the fact that they're actually a predator. So when you look at little fish and they know to hide from a, a grouper or a snapper or something like that because they know at some point that fish is going to try and eat them, those same fish, when you put them in a tank with a lionfish, they just don't see it as a threat. So what happened was because of no competition from other predators and no competition because the food is just almost swimming into their mouth, um, the, the population is just bloom. Their spawning cycle is very interesting as well. Um, people see a little lionfish about this big and they think it's a baby. You know, that's a breeding size fish. They, they start breeding the females and males. It's about sort of seven months or so when they're old enough to spawn. You put that against like conies, grazebees, and groupers. You know, conies and grazebees, it takes three to five years before they're old enough to spawn. Certain grouper species is almost 15 years before they start to spawn. So you've now got this fish that is dumping 30,000 eggs or so every spawning cycle. And the turnaround is the fact that in about six or seven months, that fish is now old enough to spawn itself. That population has gone through the roof, you know. But with the lionfish, they wipe out our juveniles. So you see the adults every single day out there until they die of old age, they're eaten by a predator, or humans take them out of the equation. There's nothing to come up through the ranks to take their places. They have no reinforcements because the lionfish have taken out the reinforcements. The lionfish are also harmful not only by eating, but by their venomous spines, which poses a threat to predators, as it can cause immense pain and numbness, or even death. Right? It's, it's about 75% of the spine carries the venom. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, it's not like a, a gland with a hollow needle that injects. The scorpion fish we get here is like that, where they can actually inject through a hypodermic needle. With a lionfish, it's actually, when you're looking down the spine, it's actually a T-shaped bone like this, and it's got two venom glands here that run down about 75% of the spine. So when you're catching the fish to cook them, I tell the fishermen, the first thing you do, just cut all the fins off. Cut the top fins and the bottom fins off, and you're good to go. It's 
say that's the head of the fish and that's the dorsal spines. It's the first 13 spines on top. It's the first spine on the pelvic fins here and the first three on the anal fin. So it's five spines on the bottom and 13 on top that carry the venom. That's it. There is no venom gland in the fish to worry about messing up if you cut it wrong or whatever. It's all in the spines. Um, now with the side fins, everybody seems to think that there is venom in those, but there, there is there is their soft fin. There is no venom gland in them. But they use these big fins to try and herd the small fish up into a corner. They like we've actually seen them in groups herding fish together. And basically, when you look at a lionfish head on with all the stripes and patterns, if you put that next to a picture of uh, a sea rod, they look very similar. So our little fish effectively are seeing these lionfish as somewhere to hide versus as a predator. Yeah. Um, we did some early experiments when we first started seeing lionfish in Bermuda. I took juvenile breams out of Harrington Sound that had never come in contact with a black grouper. Mm -hmm. I put those small breams in a tank with a black grouper and they knew to stay at the other end of the tank. They Just knew at some point that DNA. fish was going to try and eat them. So we observed that for a bit and then we took those same breams out, put them in with a the lionfish. They actually swam up to the lionfish to try and hide next to it and he ate every single one. So it's just that the fish just don't see it as a threat. And some of the argument has been that, oh, well, over time, if we do nothing, the fish will learn. Maybe, but at what cost? Uh, I think there's no doubt in anybody's mind at this point that we will potentially lose certain species of fish if we don't do anything, because they're just going to be over overeating. Every single lionfish that we've caught, every single one has had fatty liver disease, which is a classic captive problem in the fact that the fish is overeating and not working hard to get its food. So, you know, by seeing this fatty liver disease in every single one that we've necropsied, um, you know, we do autopsies on people, we do necropsies on animals and fish. Um, every single one we've necropsied has had this fatty liver disease, which is classic overfeeding problem. You just don't see that in other wild species, you know. It's because they're just constantly eating, eating. Constantly eating. We've actually managed to feed them to death in captivity before, just as a, you know, a, a, say how much will they eat, when will they stop. But that programming from millions of years, yeah. eat as much as I can because I might not eat tomorrow. You know, the fish where I'm from see me as a threat, so I have to make you know, the best of every opportunity to eat. Um, so that same mentality in the Atlantic is it's causing the issue, you know. Mm -hmm. Human beings created this problem. We're responsible for fixing